Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghosts and Spirits news video. Well, for this video, I wanted to go ahead and make this one here because it's more of a newsworthy follow-up from a video that I did a couple of years back involving the Amityville Horror. Those of you that know that particular tale, especially with regards to one of the most famous hauntings in the U.S., I'll include the link for it below in case you hadn't seen my video from it before, but I talked about the situation of what occurred at that household, some of the hauntings in particular with Jody the pig. Well, in this case, this news video, the reason why I wanted to include it here was because the original murderer, the one who started the massacre there at that house, and this is real in other words like as there's still disputes as to if the actual Amityville horror hauntings actually occurred but the murder in terms of uh, this guy Ronald DeFeo Jr. and the massacre he did for his family that is 100% real in this case it turns out that he actually passed away just the other month and so I wanted to talk about it here number one because it's newsworthy and then number two because it helps bring almost some form of finality associated with this legendary tale. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that here. First about the death of Ronald DeFeo Jr. and again some more information associated with him and how that ties into whatever is associated in terms of the Middleville horror which still to this day again remains one of the most popular hauntings within the entire United States. So yes Ronald DeFeo Jr. he was the one that was pretty much the only suspect associated with the murder of the Feo family. That happened, of course, on an infamous night on November 13th, 1974. At that time, he was 23 years old. He had stated that uh, he entered a bar and declaring pretty much out loud as far as, as pretty much anyone else can hear that his mother and his father were shot. And so, of course, uh, the police and everyone else as far as investigators went straight to that address, which was at that time known as 112 Ocean Avenue. It was changed afterward because of the popularity associated with the haunting and the book and the film to a different address to kind of deter tourists. But back then it was 112 Ocean Drive and then that's when investigators found the parents were dead and not only that but tragically all of the other siblings were dead too. Uh, Ronald DeFeo Jr. had a total of four siblings that were dead at that location. There was Don who was 18, Allison who was 13, Mark who was 12, and then John who was 9. And then his parents were Ronald and Luis DeFeo. They of course were also killed there. He stated during several circumstances like in terms of interrogations and what he was revealing to police it was at that point that he was doing like a weird mishmash of stories, first stating that there was an assailant, someone else out there that, that, that tried to have him killed by a mob, in this case a guy by the name of Louis Fellini, but as it turns out, this guy had a perfect alibi, there was nothing in terms of him even being within the same state during the time of the killings, and of course, because of the way he kept changing his story, that's when police were slowly but surely thinking that this was the guy. And so they did more an investigation. And then finally, at one point, he admitted that, yes, he absolutely caused this murder. And then even to the point where after all these murders were done, he casually just went about his work. He went back to the company, I believe, that his father owned and almost as if nothing was happening. And so there he was working for at least a day or two and then of course that's where things change and he was arrested and then that's where there was a huge trial and ultimate conviction. It was at that trial and conviction that that's where the medieval horror links start to happen. That's where apparently him and his defense lawyer, a guy by the name of William Weber, stated a defense of insanity. In fact, so much so that this guy, Ronald DeFeo Jr., stated that yes, he heard voices telling him in his head something was directing him to massacre his family. And because of these voices, these evil voices, almost like supernatural type stuff, maybe even paranormal, they told him to do this, he complied, and then that's why he tried to get that insanity plea done, and he had a psychiatrist as well. But there was also the prosecution that stated that, no, this guy Ronald DeFeo Jr. was instead someone that used drugs like heroin, LSD, 
PTSD. He had a uh, motive against his father. Apparently, they hated each other. They constantly fought all the time, too. There was even the angle of it being insurance-related in terms of the murders because he was asking police shortly afterward if there was a way for him to be able to collect uh, in terms of the insurance money of whatever was associated for their murders. And so anyway, anyway though, uh, Ronald Lafayette Jr. was ultimately found guilty, all six counts of second degree murder. So in his case, he was sent to 25 years to life. And basically, that's where he spent the majority of his life until he ended up dying just last March. It was a pretty quiet set of news, too, because this happened on March 12th. 2021, he ended up passing away there, I believe, in the hospital associated with the jail. And while the circumstances, like the final results, are still being figured out as to why he died, I'm surprised that there was not more news coverage associated with it. That's another reason why I wanted to create this here, because those of you that are fans of the Amitabha Horror like I am, again, this is a form of finality. This guy, Ronald DeFeo Jr., was pretty much the only last living witness associated with what truly occurred on that night. He pretty much knows exactly what happened. Whether there was supernatural circumstances or not, either way though, he had that knowledge in his head. Like he was the only witness for it. There's everything else in terms of what George and Kathy Lust experienced afterward. Obviously with what occurred on their home and what they chronicled within the book and the very, very successful movie that came out afterward there's all those different angles as well in terms of whatever else and uh, supernatural caused things but this guy ronald defeo jr was the one last living witness for this particular case so now that he's passed away that's pretty much it and According to him, and the reason why, again, this this case remains so mysterious, number one, of course, if you follow the story like I have, um, and again, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the actual house itself, like the stories associated with it, the information tied to it as well, the way the bodies were found, like all of them face down, no signs of struggle, the fact that he used a very, very loud, I think it was a rifle with no suppression angle to it like no suppression device so in other words it would have been heard it would have absolutely been heard not not just within the house but let alone within the neighborhood and not only just once when it comes to these shots happening but in this case he must have done it multiple times at least six times when it comes to this type of, of very loud noise in the middle of the night the fact that again nobody heard it nobody was able to find out like why they continued to be face down in their beds, why there was no sign of struggle, why it seemed like that was simply what they were doing at the time of their deaths. That's why there's so much mystery associated with this particular case, so much controversy too, but uh, Ronald DeFeo Jr. just keeps changing his story. He, from the very onset, again, changed things as far as him stating that, yes, he caused these murders, and then stating that, no, it was that other mafia guy that caused it, and then him stating that, no, it was his sister that caused it, and then, no, it was his sister and another friend, and then there was a mysterious assailant, someone else as well, that apparently caused it, and then also that that, that even his own mother, I was reading at one angle, that, that, that even he accused his own mother of, of doing the killings of the other children as well. He changed his story so many times that nobody believed him afterward, but it just added so much mystery as to why truly the circumstances surrounding with them being found face down in their beds, no signs of struggle, how that was able to happen if these gunshots were very, very loud. So still, he's the only one. He's the only one that knew exactly what occurred that night. And so with his passing, that's pretty much it. That's the finality associated with the Amityville Horror. There's pretty much no other living witness that's associated with it. There was some more controversy, too, as far as him and, you know, what happened afterwards. There was a book that came out, The Night of the Fails Died, which supposedly revealed even more information. But then Ronald DeFeo Jr. stated that no, he never provided that info that apparently gave a whole new set of angles as to in terms of who the true assailant was. And so he said, no, I never gave that information. In fact, that he left the interview before anything could be done ahead of time. And so that just, again, proves a whole different angle that, that could have been done. But again, no proof of 
any kind. My own belief, personally, I think he absolutely did it. He absolutely committed those murders. The fact that, again, that there's no ballistics, um, firearm evidence, uh, forensic, nothing else pointing to anyone else, nobody. And this was, again, one of the most high-profile cases within the United States. So much manpower and so much stuff going in to try to figure out what occurred. Um, the fact that nothing else could prove that it wasn't him. In other words, that it was him, absolutely, that it wasn't anyone else. Then, yeah, it just goes to show that he in my opinion, again, was truly the person that committed it. Now, the whole angle again with George and Kathy Lutz and what occurred to them, that's a whole separate video, something else that I touched upon lightly. I talked mainly more about Jody and about the paranormal entities within my other video. Again, you'll see the link below if you haven't had a chance to check it out. But I may do another video, in this case, talking more about the Amityville Horror Experience and what occurred on those fateful nights. But who knows? I might leave that up for later on on there but again just wanted to present this news article here this finality associated with the amenable horror interesting too ever since that fateful night and of course whatever occurred with george and kathy lutz nothing has occurred or happened at that infamous house ever since it's gone through multiple owners in fact um it was just sold if I recall correctly, less than 10 years ago for several hundred thousand dollars. And even then, all of the owners, including the current one, have stated that there's no paranormal activity, no supernatural occurrences, no evil voices, nothing along those lines. And so it makes you wonder again how that could have happened if you believe Ronald DeFeo's claims, how it could have happened just to him exclusively and not to anyone else. Um, again, it's just another weird angle to, to go by when it comes to that. But if anyone has any more information, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. What about those of you that are fans of the Amityville Horror as well? Have you read the book? Pretty scary book, no? Have you seen the movie as well? Also a pretty scary movie. Uh, if you have more information with regards to what you think points again to him being the true murderer or if there was others that were out there that could have done it, then please post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.